The Fenrir is confirmed as coming to official. A bunch of update changes. And Love Evolved is live. Yo right, kids, it's Ras Clark and welcome to your regular ARC community news. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share around and let's get into it. So the Love Evolved patch dropped last night, of which we'll touch on later, but as you may notice, the main menu screen has been updated with a little teaser about the next map coming to official Fjorda in the summer. As stated in bold letters, there is not three but four brand new creatures coming with the map. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, is that the car car? No, because that's being released separately at some point we don't know yet, leading many of us to believe this must be the Fenrir. It's been quite up in the air since Fjorda was announced coming to official. Of course, being a mod map, you can play right here, right now in its current state. The Fenrir is a creature brought to the map by mod maker himself, Nakatas, which is similar to a direwolf in appearance but with ice spikes on its back, with a face looking a bit like a Ravager. Possessing similar wolf-like traits, it comes into its own with a freeze ability like a mana, and will explode with ice if it has less than 50% health or about to fall asleep. But the ice exploding command can be done at will, creating an armor essentially around the Fenrir, which works quite identical to a Stego hard plate mode, giving it that extra protection. Ridden with or without a saddle, breedable as well, they can only be tamed in the Jotunheim realm, one of the three realms you can go to portal to within the map. With saddles available to pick up if you can beat the mini boss Steinbjorn within the same realm. And that's the current details of its abilities in its form within the map at the moment. This might all change when it comes to official. And yes, to confirm, a lot of you suspected, is this going to come to the map when it officially gets released? It was quite up in the air. The devs said maybe, Nakatis was saying maybe. Well, it's been officially confirmed. The question was put on Twitter to Nakatis himself, with many asking the question over and over again. Nakatis came back with a tick box, indicating it's there. It's coming. Fenrir is the fourth creature that you are going to see with the map when it drops. And I'm not surprised, to be honest. The Fenrir seems very polished in its current state. It might even be more developed as we get closer to the map's release. Who knows? But its combination of more powerful attacks when in ice mode and giving out a bit of a stego plate as a new type of tank as a wolf with its mobility seems to be a great new creature to enter the fray and is breedable, don't know if I mentioned that before. Adding to the three new creatures, which are of course the Andrew Sarkus, the Fjordhawk and the Desmodus Draculae. If you already follow this channel, you know how hyped I am for you out there able to play this in its official form. And me too. Apparently this is going to be a very different map to what its mod state looks like. And I can't wait to see what exactly that's going to be. And of course, a big shout out to Nakatas. Go follow him on Twitter. I'll leave a link to his Twitter in the description so you can keep up to date on what he's working on. So yes, this big, huge patch dropped last night and it wasn't without a couple of issues. One apparently was a big crash related issue surrounding the hover cell when accessing its inventory. It would apparently just crash the servers. And it was a bit widespread, a lot of complaints. This has been patched on PC, you know, PlayStation players, it seems you're waiting a little bit longer. But what exactly dropped with this patch, apart from, of course, the Valentine's event? There were quite a few surprising new changes, one of which is that players will no longer punch when cycling through snap points on Xbox when using RB. A big, big hindrance to a lot of you out there accidentally punching stuff when you're placing it. So that's going to be resolved for you no more punching yourself to death. The Dinopithecus will no longer drop its follow target when it has an attacking target. Apparently that was a thing, I didn't see that myself personally, that when you obviously whistled for it to attack something, it just stopped at some point. Well, that's no longer the issue. Players will no longer be deleted when riding a Mega Mech. That's good to know, that's good to know because you know, the amount of work you put into getting a Mega Mech to be deleted kind of sucks. <laughs> So I'm glad to hear that one's fixed. Wild Nogglings can now be targeted by Plant X. Oh yes, been a long time coming. We certainly need some defenses against them. Though if you're defending against Wild Nogglings, you are built far too close to them. 
Turret mode is now disabled after a Parasaur dies. Silly glitch, who wants to know your Parasaur is still detecting stuff when it's de not detecting itself? Fixed an issue when adjusting Dino Count Multiplier on an unofficial server, prevented the Quets, Spinos, and Tuzo spawning. Well, isn't that a wonder? Not something I ever encountered myself when running an unofficial. Don't know if a lot of you out there were. You weren't getting a Quet Spino or Tuzo spawning for you at all, but no, apparently that shouldn't be an issue anymore. The egg incubator gestation monitoring buff will now correctly display the embryo stats of unicorns. So, you know, you can uh, know when you've got a baby unicorn on the way what it's going to look like. The egg incubator hood will now show when trying to check Megalotheros stats. Baby deers, stats, job done. Element reward has been increased of King Dinopithecus by 33%, of course being the only way you can get obtain elements within Ark, Lost Island Ark, that map Ark. That's the only way you can get that resource. And now you can get a nice cheeky extra third on top, two for the price of one. <laughs> Tech shoulder cannon will now turn back on after dismounting an exosuit. Good to know about that. Fix an issue with the mammoth drum buff. Didn't know there was one. Fix several map holes on Last Island. Expected. Floating foliage. Expected. And an overspawning issue in the Last Island cave. Which cave was we getting overspawned? I didn't see that. Did you see that? Fix an issue when requiring players to install the center DLC to play on Ragnarok. Why? And added exact match parameter to some cheat, so cheat, destroy, or class name one, which is going to be a big benefit for unofficial servers. So, for the example, somebody was auto breeding and there was just stegos overspawned, you could put in destroy or put in stego underscore character underscore bb underscore c one, and that would apparently destroy them all. Though there was a way around this before, not sure what this is doing differently. But there you go, you now have a parameter. I guess a more simpler to understand parameter if you want to use this. And once again, a bunch of multiple exploits because you know, you, you love to exploit this game. It's a, it's a game that allows it. It's sandbox, open world, many different angles. And yeah, <laughs> one day, you never know. There may not be an exploit needed to be patched, but they'll continue to be patched. So Love Evolved is out, but not out for very long. You've got one singular week. This event is running for one week until Feb the 16th. So you need to maximize as much time as you possibly can. This is, in my opinion, one of the best events to take advantage of because of these chocolate boxes, which give you 50% timing affinity, two things, as well as healing up creatures, allowing you to tank more turrets or bosses, whatever type of mode you're playing on. I've got a guide, a full guide on everything about this event, and I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to know everything about it, including the admin codes to spawn in everything if you so desire to do that. And lastly, it's shout out time. This time we're shouting out Mr. Apex, who I've been following for years and years and years, showcasing various different ways of playing Ark in the PvP world. Certainly an entertaining dude to watch, and this video in particular I really did enjoy watching because it all surrounds Primitive Plus. Of course, we did a top 10 recently about the different game modes you can play in Ark Survival Evolved, one of which being Primitive Plus, the very long forgotten game mode that still exists in some shape or form. And it was great to see Apex's take on the PvP side of it and how different it is now to a few years ago, with him showcasing how much easier it is to play this game mode today. It's certainly worth a watch if you're just interested to see Primitive Plus in its current state. Who's actually playing it and what sort of bases they've got out there. Juked bases, juked bases, they've got juked bases. <laughs> I'm joking, but check it out. Judge for yourself what you think. It's definitely worth a watch. And that's your lot for today. I hope you enjoyed this. How excited are you for the Fenrir? It is coming to the map. Wow, I, yeah, I kind of expected it. I was like 90% sure it was definitely going to come. It's great to know it's definitely, definitely 
going to be in the game. Deserves to be. It's a great creature. I, I, I've had a lot of fun with it. If you want to check out more about it, go watch my Let's Play where I repeatedly died to the freezing cold temperatures of the Jotunheim realm trying to tame one of these. Where there was a lot of foul, a lot of misery, I died repeatedly. Entertainment, I guess for someone <laughs> so i'll leave a link to that in the description thanks all for tuning in comment below how many chocolates are you going to be getting and taking advantage of for the duration of the event my name's ross clark don't forget to like share and subscribe and as always ah, peace out